Hi, and welcome to Screens and Focus podcast, where we share and connect as we spotlight our favorite shows and movies. I'm Diana, and today we're talking about The Walking Dead Season 11, Episode 14, and our recommendations on the newsreader, Black Crab, along with our recap on the Oscars. Hi, Margaret. How are you today? I'm doing really good, Diana. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Hey, I didn't tell you, but but look what I have. I have some... Uh-oh. Vino. <laughs> <laughs> what kind is it? What's the flavor? I, it's a red blend. It's a red blend. So... <laughs> I like the blends. The blends are good. Yeah, it's good. I'm enjoying it. All right. So in The Walking Dead, we see Daryl and Rosita. And I could have swore one of them hands the other a donut at the desk. <laughs> yes, they did. So I want to know, this is our question of the day. What oh. is your favorite donut? Oh, well, there's this place that I used to go to, or not, I would go to happy hour <laughs> after work with the people from work. You know, we'd all go there Thursday nights, Acapulco uh -huh. in Westwood. And there's a donut shop down there. And it's family run, been there for ages, but they made peanut butter and jelly donuts. What? And they were, or maybe no jelly, but it was peanut butter with chocolate on top. So peanut butter inside with chocolate. Oh my God. They were the best donuts so they may still be there they may not be i don't know if they still exist but it was like a you know a landmarky kind of place yeah how about you what kind of donuts do you like uh you know i'm sure i'm probably pretty plain but i just like the glazed old-fashioned they're just my favorite uh -oh. i love them yeah and i also like apple fritters so oh yeah those are good yeah. i like the peanut donuts too I don't know that I've had that. I'm going to have to try that now. Yeah. Well, it's just a raised donut with glaze, and then they dip it in peanuts. So the uh, outside is oh, all like Oh, I see what you mean. Peanuts. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I yeah. don't think I've had one of those, though. I'm not a huge frosting per. Like, I don't like the frosting and the sprinkles. That's just mm -hmm. not me. I do buy that for my family because they love them, but I don't. I just want the plain glaze, please, and just give me the old-fashioned. It's just my favorite. Yeah. I'll be so yeah. happy. I'll be so happy with a cup of coffee in that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right, friends out there, let us know what you think. What is your favorite donut? I would really love to know. I, I should put out a poll. This would be great information. You can leave us a comment <laughs> on social media, our website, or email at screensinfocus at gmail.com. Would love to know. The links are in our show notes. Okay, so episode 14, Rotten Core. Lots of action, revelations, and high stakes in this episode. Maggie and crew meet up with Negan and Annie to get their people out as Aaron confronts Toby and Herschel. Little Herschel confronts Negan. Yikes. Meanwhile, Daryl and Rosita are sent on a mission for Sebastian as we learn more about him and the Commonwealth and we find out who stole the guns. Okay, so I... I really want to say that each episode that we are getting gets better and better. I just feel it. I get I'm I'm dreading when we get to 16 in this uh part 2 because it's going to be over. We're going to have to wait for part 3, but I feel some really powerful moments happen and some badass moments happen. I have to start off with Negan and little Herschel. Herschel is a stowaway in Maggie's truck and a stormtrooper finds him, but Negan rescues him and then radios Annie, who happens to be Negan's new wife and pregnant says, wife. yeah, pregnant. <laughs> Why? That's a big, huge bomb. I'm like, what? 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 <clears throat> OK, so there's so much we need to break down in just that. But let's just stay on on little Herschel for a second and then we'll move to <laughs> to Maggie. But Maggie, yeah, Maggie, her re well, I have something to say about her reaction, but I just oh, okay. want to say, okay, I okay. just want to say right. first, little Herschel, <laughs> yeah, 
Oh, the fact that Negan is like basically taking care of him and radios Annie. And then, of course, Maggie finds out, oh, my God, my son's with the man that uh, the man that uh, that killed his father. So that was just kind of crazy. So first, like I said, Herschel still weighs, right, because his mother's taken off to go help her people gets in the this vehicle. She doesn't know it, along with Lydia and and Elijah. And so then he gets found out by the stormtrooper. But I was just thinking, wow, you know, it, it just I like that they showed this part of little Herschel because you're getting to see a little more of a personality in this kid. Right. He wants to hang mm-hmm. out and go with his mom. And we also see how he interacts with Negan figuring things out. So I really liked how they highlighted this actor, uh, this little actor in this role. And uh, with Maggie, I think when she saw Annie eat that ginger and she kind of looks at her and she says, yeah, I'm 12 weeks. And first off, I'm thinking 12 weeks. It's been that long. I mean, because first they had to... Annie and Negan had to get to know each other at some point. I, I'm sure it wasn't like the Maybe first not. month they met. I don't know. <laughs> I know. Who know. knows, right? Yeah, you just never know. We don't know yet. But, um, and then it's been 12 weeks. I'm like, wow, how long has it been? I thought it had been maybe like 60 days is what I was thinking. I didn't know it had yeah. been months yeah. already. So that was yeah, interesting. Yeah, I didn't either. Yeah, an mm-hmm. interesting information that we get to know now. And uh, and the fact that he's married already, too, right? I mean, you're already, like, married? When did you get engaged? <laughs> How did you do it? <laughs> did you get photos? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, um... They'd have to go to the Commonwealth <laughs> for all of that. I know, right? That's <laughs> for sure. So anyway, so now she's having a baby. You're having my baby. Is she? Do you think? <laughs> Sorry. But, Paul Lanka song. I know. Nobody knows who Paul Lanka is. I know. I'm <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's an oldie, but a. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> I'm wondering, though, if that actually comes to be because Maggie and Negan have a spinoff. I know. Well, this woman must die. There's so much. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. There's so much to think about and speculate and wonder. But for now, she is alive. And, and she... there's no Herschel. There was no Herschel. So I bet yeah. she dies protecting Herschel. Yes. And Herschel does. So it's like a threefer, right? I Okay, okay. we've jumped way ahead. <laughs> but I'm there with you, Margaret. I'm there with you because, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, we're so far ahead. And I'm sorry that we're talking about this now. But I I, I can't help it. We're talking about it, right? So we got we to gotta kind of dig into this part. But I think it was Chris Jericho, the wrestler that was on uh, The Talking Dead. And he said something to the effect of Herschel. Maggie, somehow Negan's going to have to pay, even if it's not maybe through directly through Maggie and Lil Herschel. And his thought was like, something might happen to his oh. wife and the baby. And yeah, maybe totally. that would be the, you know, this is kind of full circle for you, you know, for what you did. I don't know that that's going to happen, but... Uh, you're you were wow. right about them going off, but then at the same time, maybe she's out there taking care of little Herschel. Maybe they become this great big fa- happy family. Yeah, no, I don't. Well, you know what? You I never don't know think anything. Herschel's gonna survive. Oh my God! You don't think that Herschel is going to survive? No. <gasps> oh, no. oh, yes, he has to. Okay, I think he must. Why? He, is, he doesn't have he's, to. He's Glenn's son. He has to. So he has to. No, well, <laughs> as a fan, sure. Yes, but yeah. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so. He probably wanted too much money. <laughs> the little kid, or his parents did. His parents <laughs> wanted more money. They're like, no. <laughs> Could <be>. guess what? <laughs> You just signed your death notice. <laughs> you know, anything is possible in The Walking Dead. We see so many things. We, we've we come up with our own predictions. And then the next week, we see it totally flipped, right? It's not even close to what we thought. We're like, oh, well, okay, that happened. But a lot of things we're really right on about, too. So it's yeah. just uh, it's just kind of cool to, to, to wonder and speculate. And then we'll really find out in the end what really happened with everybody. But back to Annie telling... Um, Maggie, look, he's in good hands and 
you know, he told, and she said, how can you be with him? And she says, because we've all done terrible things. And I know the man that he is now, and he's not going to let anything happen to your son. And it's interesting to see Maggie's face. I just saw so much in her eyes. And I, I thought, I, I felt as though she has to see Negan in a different way at this point. I felt that that's what she was thinking. She thought, damn, I just can't kill him now. Now he's got a wife and a kid. And I'll be just like him, just like him if I do something. <laughs> so I feel I felt her little wheels turning in that moment. So I just thought that that was, um, I don't know. I just thought that that was interesting and, and that she says, you know, Annie says, none of us have clean hands. All I can do is try to be better, just like him. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other thoughts about that? I, well, I thought that was, uh, I guess she's growing. Maggie's growing with all of these people that she's meeting now. So this was just another person who is going to help her see that mm -hmm. she needs to move on and grow up and view the reality for what it is, how they live and how she's, and as I have said previously, she really, Maggie has really become very similar to Negan and just the way she makes her thought process and how she handles things and takes care of business because she has to, to protect her own. So I think the thing that I liked the most about this episode was that everybody started to converge previously and now they're converging, you know, in the previous episodes. And now there's a need for everybody to get back together again, to fight against this evil, which is the Commonwealth. So I thought it was really interesting that Lyd Lydia is, is very insightful and very thoughtful. Yeah. And I thought it was really, really interesting that, you know, she pointed out that they're all the same. <laughs> it she doesn't did. matter. They just wear different stuff. So, yeah. And I think that what we're all kind of coming to the conclusion of, or at least I am, is that if all of these communities that they're trying to become part of, you know, because they've hit many communities and, and really wanted to mix and mingle and fit in and assimilate. And they haven't been able to because they've all had some evil thing running through them. And the same thing with the Commonwealth. We just haven't really figured it out completely. I mean, they're just, those guys are just, you know, they're like Putin. <laughs> you know, they just want to land grab and take everything. And, and um, so it's that part of of control. It's interesting because I think I'm, I'm just trying to figure out where it's all going to go because if they can't find a thing, a community that they can fit in with and work with, they're either going to have to go back to one of the ones that they've established and, you know, work back into that and get along, or they're just going to break apart and, and go wherever they're more comfortable. I don't know. It's really weird. Or they're just going to be wandering you know, they're no, nobody's going right. to, I don't think everybody's going to die at the end, but I think that they're going to have to, you know, figure out where they really need to be. So it was, it was interesting to watch Maggie out do this enlightenment. I think that Annie wanted Maggie to go with her and not stay yeah. there because she wanted to talk to her and she wanted to figure her out and maybe try to convince her to be a little bit more generous with her, um, opinion of Negan and, and know that he's not, you know, he's trying to change and people need to change and you got to grow, you know, yeah. grow up lady. So, so I like that. I like, I like Annie. I think she's a very realistic person. And I liked that Negan came in and saved everybody, you know, yeah, uh -huh. um, which I thought was cool. And he also, you know, saved Herschel. So it's kind of like, how could you not trust him? Cause he's, he's not killing you. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, like before. Yeah, Negan's always had a, a soft spot for all young people. He just does. Yeah. So, yeah. well, he was um, a gym teacher, you said, yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah. I believe so. That's so. Probably why. Yeah. 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 What about Toby? Oh, my gosh. Toby Carlson, the CIA guy, he almost finds the group. He sees that footprint going toward yeah. the hallway that they're at. But right then, right then, because Maggie yeah. had devised a plan to get Aaron and Father Gabriel up to the roof and use um, Elijah to uh, to come from behind on the troopers. But yeah, he's almost about to walk 
And I thought, oh no, oh no, he's gonna, he's gonna find them. <laughs> but also, it was. I thought it was very interesting that they put that bottle of alcohol in there too, right? How he kind of looked so, like he really wants a drink because he had said at another time when I think with Lance that he's a recovering alcoholic, oh, and okay. um, and so you know he swirls that bottle around. He wants it so bad, and then he just. Uh, then he sees the footprint. He's about to walk that way. And then he's like, oh, we hear them up there. And then they go running up there. And, you know, he was still um, thinking he had control over everything and everybody until uh, Elijah took out all the, the troopers. And oh, my gosh, what did you think of Aaron and his actions during that moment? I thought it was pretty violent. You know, the whole scene, because they didn't even cut him any slack. They had no um, no grace or <laughs> compassion or empathy, no. or they were not civil. So I think it, it showed how everybody, when they, and it, it goes, harkens back to the whole Negan thing and how he used to be. If you have to do that, you have to do that. And it's interesting because they were talking about the skulls on the shelf. Uh huh. Well, I mean, what's the difference? Whether you're displaying them, you're still killing people and yeah. you're killing good people, not good as in good people, but you're killing human beings who are not monsters, you know, physically yet. They're not dead yet, but I don't know, eradicating. And and then I really liked, actually, I really liked the whole Mercer and um, what's her name? <laughs> Carol. Carol, oh my God, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't spit it out. But yeah, um, <laughs> I really liked how they, they zoomed in and saved everybody. And again, mercilessly took, you know, he, Mercer, <laughs> took the two guys out before they could <gasps> do anything because he knew he would have to. So just for money, I mean, cough. I know. All right. So let's dig into that section. So Daryl and Rosita, let's start at the beginning of that because they, it felt like you were going into a police station, didn't it? When you, you see yeah, Daryl yeah. walk in and he tells Carol, Hey, I'm going to meet you for lunch. <laughs> Isn't that so bizarre? He's all, yeah, we'll meet up here. He goes in, they eat some donuts. The way Daryl is sitting on the edge of the desk with Rosita and they're talking. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, is this an episode of NYPD blue? I don't know. Because that's what it feels like. <laughs> Probably total procedural drama. And then Sebastian shows up and he starts bragging about handling himself with rotters and says, Daryl, Daryl was there. And of course, Daryl kind of makes fun of <laughs> his attempts. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't think he liked that because he's all, oh, yeah, now I've got a, something for you to do. And then so Rosita and um, Daryl are off to go do their police duties, but then uh, these two troopers come and say, oh, no, you're coming with us. And, you know, when they took them out to that field where they were going, I thought, oh, my God, are they going to try and kill them? Because it just felt so weird that oh. they were taking them to this oh. place. I'm like, oh, hmm. my gosh. what? Because they keep taking them and taking them. They're like, where are we going? Where are we going? Almost there. And then they finally get to that place. And then here comes Sebastian. Oh, my God, that guy. And uh, you know, he, he wants to get to, to I guess, his old buddy that had a bunch of money with, is stashed away in that uh, vault uh, in that so, house. So who was, the, who was the, the dead guy? I which, thought I interpreted which dead that, guy? you know, who they cut up to smear all over themselves. Oh. I thought that was his buddy. <gasps> Here, I don't that's know. That's how when I watched it just recently. Um, yeah. I don't know either, but it could just be some random walking dead rotter. <laughs> yeah, some rotter. Well, yeah, I didn't even think that it could be anybody, but yeah, maybe it was someone. I don't know, but they, uh, yeah, he wanted them to smear themselves up because he wanted them to go in and get it without ammunition because that's why he wasn't sending his troop troopers in because they can't use the ammo. So they want them to well, get in there without to defend themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And so really, it's, it's the skill <laughs> or the right. lack thereof. Yes. And so he knows that um, Daryl and Rosita can do it. But I really, really liked it when uh, Daryl just went up to him and uh, 
oh, says, um, <laughs> yeah, he grabbed him and he says, um, you think your advanced military training is going to help you right now as he holds this knife up to his throat. And he says, you threaten our kids one more time and I'll gut you. And I was thinking, oh, my God, Daryl, I love seeing you like this. Such a pop of bear. I loved it. I loved it so much seeing him that way. And then, of course, they say, oh, do you want your kids to be orphans? And so then Rosita is all like, oh, is this the only thing we have to do? And I'm thinking, no, it's not the only thing you're going to have to do. <laughs> Simple girl. <laughs> yeah, they're just going to tell you yeah. that. And then they're going to yeah. keep bringing it on. So then, of course, they have to smear the guts on themselves and go in there. And then they find out. It's been happening numerous times before that there's a whole group of 12 that were sent in there and only one girl survived and uh, she was still there. But they have to get out, right? They have to get out amongst all that walkers. And it reminds me of all the times that they had to spread guts all over themselves. Um, mm hmm. And that's when Carol and, and Mercer show up and Daryl says, how'd you know? And Carol's all, because you didn't make our lunch date. That's how I know who <laughs> knew. <laughs> but I thought it was interesting that she, Carol went to Mercer, of all people, and said, come help me find my group. And he went. That he Well, but do you, th I mean, she might have just been asking him where they were since he's in the same team. Yeah. But he wasn't in charge of the recruits or no. the people. So there's a division within the 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 security force, I guess. So so she probably just went to go ask him, where's Daryl? Why didn't he come back? And then, you know, he put it together. Because he's a he's a he's an upstanding kind of guy. He's not trying to screw anybody and he knows you have to play the game in order to get ahead. Because again, they talked about the rules. You know? Yeah. That was tough for him. You could tell that was tough for him when they came out and he had found out that Sebastian had sent in so many of his troop, you know, his troopers before or people that he mm -hmm. knew or whatever it may have been. But, um, yeah, he didn't like that at all. And that's when he came out and uh, shot those two guys, the two troopers. Yeah. And then well, tells they were just going to it's kill or be killed, I think. Exactly. No, I totally agree. So. And tells Rosita and Daryl, you're going to have to still pay Sebastian or else he's, you know, you're going to have to. But I think it weighed on Mercer doing that. I, I don't think it was that easy for him to do, but he knew he had to. I What I'm seeing is is Mercer becoming part of the group, the core group of The Walking Dead. Yeah, he cast, is. Cast, you know. Yeah. And it's, and it's because they're doing things the way that he, they're taking care of business in the right way. And they're, you know, putting themselves... They're trying to play the game because they have to, and they know better if they don't that they'll end up dead. But I think, um, you know, the manipulation that goes on is just, it's so bad between all the people getting them to do all these things. And actually, I'm pretty surprised that um, Rosita and Daryl were paired together. Yeah. Because you'd think that they would would be a little worried yes. that, of what they would get together to decide to do, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. that they might do something to their benefit, not to the benefit of the, of the Commonwealth, aside from them being two very skilled hand-to-hand -hand combat fighters. Right. You'd think it would be better spent putting one with, you know, a less experienced person just to like train them and like they were doing when they did the training session mm -hmm. through the house. Yeah. Same kind of thing, but. I thought the same thing I too. I don't know. Yeah, I thought the same thing, too, when they paired them up. I thought, oh, that's interesting. I guess they trust yeah. those two together. When Daryl first went in and he was, I don't know if he was uh, in that control room and he had to fight all those walkers off. Oh, I, thought, I love that shot. <gasps> it was cool. That was really cool. And just fighting all of them. Uh, well, the pieces of his armor were coming off as he was fighting them. I was afraid he was going to get bit. Yeah. But I really liked it because the lights were like flashing in there. So you could mm -hmm. sometimes see it and you could sometimes not see it. So you weren't seeing every piece. And so I thought that was a really interesting shot. And I liked the way that they did that. And I also thought that Daryl looked so badass fighting off those walkers because he didn't have a gun. He didn't have his bow and arrow. He had to yeah. fight with his hands. And so, and he really did fight them off. So I, I love that part. I thought it was really cool. 
Yeah, I like that part too. Okay, Margaret, do you have any other thoughts or tidbits on this episode? I enjoyed it. I think I liked last week's episode a little bit better because it was tighter um, just with the storylines that were running, you know, congruently. But this this week was a little more, to me, a little more scattered, but I, I, but it was easier to, to, to digest as far as just the stories that were happening. So they didn't, I didn't really need to put a lot of thought into my interpretations because it was all action, action, action. Yeah. You know, it was reason, action, reason, action. So, um, and it was a continuation of last week. So it was set up really well last week to just kind of flow And I was thinking to be a writer on this show must be so amazingly either fulfilling or kind of um, stressful because you want it all to work. (laughs) Yeah. You you want it all to to piece together and make sense. And so they must have just written everything all out Mm -hmm. and then decided to chop it up to make the episodes. So I don't know. I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Uh, last week's much better, though, I think. I like them both. And I I, I think I think <laughs> I what know. I liked, I really loved last week's. I loved it, loved it. And then, like I said, this week I loved it. I just feel like it gets better. And I yeah. felt this week, the reason I did love this week was there was a lot of action. Mm-hmm. I felt, I, I just felt like our group is so skilled in so many things and I like seeing them that way. Yeah. I was also shocked with the deaths that were happening. That fact that Aaron killed Toby and the fact that Mercer killed those troopers um, um, and the fact that we learned that Negan is married and has a baby. I mean, all these things. I just felt like boom. I was like not just one surprise yeah. throughout the whole thing. It was all these surprises. And then at the end, at the very end, we see who took the guns. Yeah. It's yeah. Leah. And, you know, when they first showed her without showing her head, I'm like, who is this buff gal Uh, because she looked like she (laughs) was really buff and then they showed her face i'm like oh that's leah i'm like oh was that really her because that body looked you know she looks a little more petite to me unless it was just the shot that they you know the angle of the shot but yeah i'm like oh my god it's leah so i think that i just all these oh and then the herschel the whole part with little herschel that was shocking too the fact that Mm -hmm. this little kid is holding a gun in this show i was like so i think my mind was blown and and that was also a very (laughs) emotional moment right so we get this death and then that death and then that revelation and then now this emotional you know peace and so Mm -hmm. i i think that's why i liked it so much so much happened Mm -hmm. And um, so I really enjoyed that. And I also really liked the walkers at the very beginning when they showed the walkers on the ground. And then when um, oh. <laughs> Toby Carlson was killed and yeah. thrown, you know, on the he splats and he's like, he can't get up because I'm sure all his bones are broken, but uh, he's still alive. And then all of yeah. a sudden the walkers um, awaken and they crawl over to him and, you know, start you know, getting him, Snacky. eating him. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like screaming and I'm like, Oh my yeah. God. Oh my God. It was, it was well done. Those walkers were really done. I Well yeah. done. I thought that was a great shot. And then, Oh, when Carol goes back after all this happens. Oh, to what's his face. Yeah. yeah. And she goes into Hornsby and she starts mm-hmm. saying what she's done, you know, what happened. And then you realize again, another thing we realize is that he knows what Sebastian is up to. He knows that troopers are being sent so that he can get the money and he doesn't care. He's allowing it to happen because, and then Carol's just like, oh, she's playing along. She's like, okay, okay. And, and he says, oh man, it's so good to have someone who, who gets, you know, what I'm doing. And, and -hmm. I think it's her that says people can be a part of the problem or the solution. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know if she says it or if he says it, but yeah. yeah. And And it's like, ah, and then she turns around she has that smile and she turns around and she's all, God damn it. I'm going to kill you, man. I'm going to kill you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So So do you think she went there because she was just trying to um, plant some information or pick some information? I mean, what do you think the purpose, her whole goal was to inform him, to give him information and be on his good side as to what happened? Or do you think she was actually 
testing the waters to see if he was the mastermind behind the whole thing. Okay, so I think me, because I'm just naive myself, I was thinking, oh, she just went there and was talking to him. But no, I really think, honestly, <laughs> I think that she was going there probably to, knowing Carol, she was going to fi- find, go there and figure out what he knew. Because I kept oh, okay. thinking, why are you giving up this information of what you did and where you were? Why are you doing that, Carol? Don't trust him. Don't trust him. Like, ah, this is Carol. She doesn't trust him. Yeah. So... I think she was going to find out what he knew. Mm-hmm. So that's what I got, especially, you know, after turning around, after making the statement, even though, you know, she doesn't fully believe that, you know, kill or be killed, whatever that statement was. Um, and she has that scowl on her face. <laughs> yeah. So, you knew at that point, I don't know. Cause she's trying, I mean, she tries to play him. So I, that's, you know, that's kind of what I was thinking because she's going in little Miss Goody Two Shoes, which she's not, and uh, and he's buying it because he doesn't know any better. So, yeah. All right, Margaret. We are at and the award goes to. So tell me, what was your favorite quote, character, or moment in this episode? I really liked Annie and Maggie. I really liked Annie. So I thought that that was a good turning point or starting beginning point or a revelation. Or a, you know, a spiritual moment (laughs) for Maggie to connect with somebody who is genuine and sincere and is the leader of that group, too. So on that level, they're the same, you know, power wise. And I thought it was interesting that Maggie was letting her take the lead and she was showing that she could be a follower. She had to be. So I thought that was a really I thought it was a good a good moment to just show where everybody, those two women were, which is kind of reflective of the whole group too. Just, you know, wanting to stick together and take care of each other. Yeah. So you had so many moments. I know. I know, but you know, what was my favorite? It was hard because I almost picked Daryl. I I almost did. I almost picked Daryl. Then I almost picked Mercer. (laughs) But no, it's always, it always ends up being the part that tugs at my heartstring. So it was Herschel and Negan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Herschel asked Negan, why doesn't my mom like you? Are you a bad man? Mm -hmm. My mom told me a bad man killed my dad. It's you, isn't it? As he raises the gun. And Negan says, yeah, it was me, kid. What I took away from you and your mom, there isn't anything I can do that can make it better. Maybe I deserve to die, but these people don't. (sighs) And then little Herschel puts down the gun and then Lydia comes in, takes it away. And Negan just has tears in his eyes. Oh God, it just got me. It got me. It got me for both of them. It got me for Herschel because here's this little kid who put these pieces together Mm -hmm. and, and was kind of asking Negan based on what he knows and his mother has told him or or whatever it is and figured out, ah, this is that guy. And then it was true what Negan said. It was heartbreaking because I think Negan probably really does care for little Herschel. One, because he cares for kids. Two, because he knows he took away his dad. So I don't know. It just was so, it was, and then now Negan is going to have possibly a child and knowing what that feels like, he even knows more now what Maggie you know, had to go through with her, with, Mm -hmm. you know, and raising a child without the dad. So my eyes welled up with tears both times that I watched it. So I just thought it was, um, yeah, it it was, it was moving to me. I love these characters. And so (laughs) I get really invested. And then, and then uh, Negan says, you know, we've got unfinished business in a few years, come find me and we'll settle it. And I'm thinking he's going to, He's going to. I don't know. Well, unless he gets killed. I know. <laughs> Margaret. That would be Herschel. <laughs> I know. Um, so I just want to bring up a quote that um, Negan said earlier on when they first uh, met up with Maggie and, and the rest of them. He says, let's put our shit back in our pants oh. and zip <laughs> up, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember that. that. Yeah, that was funny. Oh, it was so funny. He always comes up with the best 
lines. All right, Margaret, tell me one thing you learned in this episode and then what you're looking forward to in The Walking Dead. Well, I think the biggest thing that stood out to me was the Lydia just making the comment that they're all the same. You know, you can't, they just look different. And I already, I spoke about that earlier in this podcast, but I really think that that's going to be the hardest revelation or the hardest reality that they're going to have to deal with is that there just is no perfect place. So they're going to have to compromise someplace, somewhere in their ethical, moral, Mm -hmm. you know, daily life wannabes. Yeah. (laughs) So I don't know. Did you, what did you get from it? Well, I want to say about Lydia, what I want to say about Lydia real quick was um, it's interesting because at first she wanted to leave and go with them. But now I think she sees it differently because they both are saying we're going to go back to the Commonwealth because we have to explain to Lance what happened. They've got to come up with some story. And um, and that's when I think she tells them that. So I'm like, oh, so now she has a different tune. But it's because she learned. She's oh, man, they're all the same. Just different masks or they wear different clothing or however yeah, they said it. Yeah. So it was really good. I really liked, even though it was a small part for Lydia, I liked the role that she played in there. Even over as she listened to Negan and Herschel because they would shoot to her listening to them. Mm-hmm. And then she's the one that came over and got the gun. Okay, so what I learned is that sometimes you have to do the things you didn't think that you were capable of, hmm. which is scary. And I'm looking forward to learning what Leah has become and how oh. our group will move forward with the Commonwealth. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah, we got two more episodes. Looking forward to it. Okay, that wraps up our conversation on The Walking Dead. What are you currently watching, Margaret? You watching anything good? Well, on TV or streaming, I should say, I decided I was going to give Hulu has some gems periodically. So I thought I would check out Hulu and see. Because I feel like on the weekend, I'm looking, looking, looking for a movie or for something just to entertain me. But on Hulu, I found a really interesting um, series, which I believe is a new series to Hulu. And it's a um, called The Newsreader, and it's based in um, a newsroom. And it's 1996, so it's kind of a period piece of that time frame. And um, it follows the newsroom as a newsroom, but it also it really is focusing in on a new eager reporter who wants to be at the news desk. So the news reporter or news reader really is like the news guy, you know, like Walter Cronkite or Peter Jennings and beyond. And um, so it's really kind of interesting to watch this guy sort of work, work through how to present a story or report a story out in the field. And then the, the news desk consists of this older guy who should be retiring. And the lady who is his um, partner, in crime is the one who's getting all the ratings. So it's a, it shows it from the newsroom perspective and it's the interchanges and the the gossip. And it's a very complex, very layered um, series. And I've only seen three episodes, but um, I thought it was really, really kind of fascinating. But they're Australian, so you have to... Uh. You, they're speaking English at least. <laughs> yeah. So then the, the movie that I saw was kind of interesting because I, here I'm home trying to find a good movie and I see black crab and I'm uh, on Netflix and I'm thinking, Oh man, what is this about? What could it possibly be about? And I hate, I don't like to read what the reviews say or really what it's about necessarily, because if it sounds stupid, you know, I'm not going to watch it. I kind of like going in blind. So this is a Swedish film and it's got that Numi Rapace who is uh, in the um, girl with the dragon tattoo. She was the yeah. lead in that. Yeah. And she's again plays this tough chick, but it's it's a post apocalyptic in Sweden, I guess, because they're naming places I you know I'm not familiar with. And um they recruit six people, six soldiers, she is one of them, and um what they have to do is deliver these two boxes and they are told not to open them but they have to do a hundred kilometers on the ice at night so that the, the other, um, well, the people who are trying to take over. So there's two like war infections so that they don't see them. So it's kind of this whole, you know, 
tense situation because they're on the ice. Are they going to go through? And if they go through, what's going to happen? You know, and then they're being shot at. The helicopters are out. There are these little spots on the ice. So there's a lot of deceit. There's a lot of manipulation. It's a kind of a head game. So it's really, really interesting because you don't know where all these six characters are coming from. But I thought it was really well done for a Swedish film. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but I would, I would see it. It didn't get, it didn't rate very well with Rotten Tomatoes and all those other things. But you know, you kind of just have to let it loose and just kind of take it for what it is. Yeah. So, what about you? Are you watching anything, or do you want to talk about the Oscars? I think I am going to just talk about the Oscars. Ooh. Yeah. Because, um, well, we gave our predictions and we were pretty good between the both of us. <laughs> I think we covered, uh, yeah, we yeah. got them correct. I'm surprised. Um, for best film was Coda, which you had um, mm-hmm. predicted that would win. Best actress was Jessica Chastain, who won for The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Mm-hmm. Best actor was, we both had guessed, Will Smith. Mm hmm. We'll get back to that Oops. in a minute. <laughs> Best Supporting Actress, Ariana DeBose for West Side Story. Best Supporting Actor, Troy Kotzer. Best Director, Jane Campion, which I really thought she would win, and I'm really happy that she did. I think she's the third female to win an Oscar female director. So that was cool. And Dune. Yeah. Wow. Dune won like a lot of a awards. Lot. Best visual effects, original mm-hmm. score, cinematography, mm-hmm. film editing, production, design, sound. I mean, that's a lot of awards to yeah. show how yeah. we both liked that film. And it was it was mm-hmm. uh, just beautiful sounding and looking. And we mm-hmm. liked the story and the acting in it, too. So yeah. go watch Dune, people. It's good. Um, Drive My Car, which was the Japanese film, won Best International Feature. And then Best Original Song, No Time to Die, Billie Eilish and Phineas. And I saw, well, you saw the performances too. And do you know that that was the only one that captured me? So I was like, I'm glad they win. But I do like Billie Eilish and Phineas. So that was the only one that I sat through. Like everybody else, I was like... Wanting to yeah. speed, kind of speed through it, unfortunately. I'm sorry, but I did. And then I also yeah. thought Lady Gaga was so cool with Liza Minnelli mm. and telling her, I got ya, I got ya. Oh, I thought it was so sweet. Yeah. And, I, and Liza Minnelli kept looking up at her. was like, is it time now? She says, or am I doing this? And so um, I thought that was a, a kind of a cool moment. And the hosts, they did okay. They did all right. Some, they did make me laugh. Um, you know, I still miss Billy Crystal, but um, <laughs> I did find them funny at times uh, with um, Amy Schumer wearing her Spider-Man costume <laughs> swinging around. <laughs> And I did like, (laughs) yeah, I did like certain moments in, in Mm -hmm. this, when they did the memoriam, I liked how they had people out there singing songs. I thought that was kind of cool. I liked how they brought Mm -hmm. the top five movies or I don't know, they did spotlighted different things and how they also highlighted the films throughout the course of the night of the best films and showing a little bit of that. So I, I did appreciate that. And, um, but of course, Will Smith's um, award was marred by the earlier himself. <laughs> yes, because yeah, Chris Rock came and uh, did his jokes, but did insult uh, Jada Pinkett Smith, and she does have a medical condition, and so that all happened. And I'm sure anybody who sees social media knows what happened because it is all over the place, and and unfortunately, it just marred. The whole, you know, Will Smith the and his whole Oscar, yeah. and yeah. and you know, even well, though the he's rest since of the show, yeah, exactly. And I know Questlove was winning his best documentary at the time, and so that did you see that? The soul no, of I summer, want to though. The summer I, soul. I saw it. I thought it was really good. I did. Oh, I do. I want yeah, to watch that. I really liked it. Oh, it makes me want to watch it now. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go watch that. But yeah. um yeah, me and you had just talked earlier how it just kind of marred everything and, and this is just gonna be remembered, unfortunately. And you know, we talked about because we both wanted Will Smith to win. We both like him, but he just made a horrible, bad decision. I mean, it was something he should have handled 
another place in time on his own on one on one, not here or, at the Academy Awards where, yeah. you know, and we, you know, how something must have been within Will Smith that he was dealing with. And that's how he let it out. And it shouldn't have been. So, I don't, yeah, I don't know. And, and of course, now every social media post has his slap, every single one. So yeah. it's just going to be there for yeah. a very long time. So he's going to end up being blackballed, I, I bet. Nobody's going to want to work with him. I, you know, I wondered, you can't I do know, that. and I you thought about, I know, I know. And the thing At least is, that's what I, I think. Yeah, I don't think so either. I don't think so either, especially not at a place like that. And but I thought, oh, my God, he's probably not going to be invited back. He may not be um, nominated again. I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I thought what Denzel told him was a uh, was a good uh, was a good thought or a good quote, I should say. Oh, you mean that when you hit your when you're at your top? Yeah. Okay. So Denzel said uh, to Will Smith, at your highest moment, be careful. That's when the devil comes for you. Hmm. I just thought that that was uh, uh, just well said. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to say go watch Coda. Okay. For movies, go watch Coda. We loved it. (laughs) Margaret and I loved Coda. It's a happy movie. It's a feel good movie. I mean, sure, it's emotional. It's about family and all of that. But you know, the heart of it, it's a really good movie. So go watch it. That's what we have to Mm -hmm. recommend. Thank you, Margaret, for joining me today and your recommendations. Oh, sure. That's our show. Thanks for tuning in. We are grateful you tuned in and we hope something we said today resonated with you, gave you a chuckle, some happiness, some positivity or inspiration. Please subscribe to our website and follow Screens in Focus and tell a friend. We would love more members of our TV club. You can rate and review the podcast on Apple, Stitcher or wherever you get your podcasts. This will help other listeners find us. Next show will be on The Walking Dead Season 11, Episode 15. You can find our website listed in our show notes. See you next time. Bye. Bye.